Hi, my name is Alfonso Hago, and this is my recipe for designing great, engaging online learning environments, taking into account some of the new changes in technology, such as open technologies, mobile technologies, and just the greater ubiquity of technology. There are many recipes, but I think you'll find my recipe interesting and exciting. Community is very important in an online learning environment. It's important to build interaction within a course so that students collaborate with each other, get to know each other, and the conversation is not only student teacher, student instructor, but it's also student student. And increasingly, especially when we think of a MOOC, that there are a lot of students involved, that conversation that being a more student student and students learn from one another using wikis and just sharing information is increasingly important. The peer review system also may help foment that community. But community can even go into, well, if they're working on a prior project, applying on the project or working on a project for the greater community together. So also taking away if you can, bring in the online community into the physical community. I think that's possible, and that also builds um, that relationship between the online world and the physical world. When we think of collaboration, it's close in hand with the sense of community. We are a community partly because we collaborate. Collaboration is important in the world today, and it will even be more important tomorrow. We increasingly face problems that are highly complex and require people with multiple talents and key individuals, individuals that have a great level of expertise but are also able to cross boundaries. And by crossing those boundaries, they can collaborate with one another and tackle those greater challenges that are not just in what, within one discipline, but they go beyond that discipline. Collaboration is important in the business world, it's important in society. We are all together, we're all part of a community together, and we need to collaborate. So when we build an assignment that fosters collaboration, even though it's difficult, students sometimes do not like to collaborate, but we need to foster it because it's something that is a value that education can give people that uh, goes beyond the actual subject matter. One of the things that I see with the advent especially of online learning and with more courses being available anywhere in the world is being able to distinguish yourself. What makes that course unique? What makes a Chemistry 101 course something different and new that they would really be gaining something different from being in that course? Um, maybe the project you make in that course is unique and you advertise it as such. Or maybe just the whole course itself is unique. A course in gamification, in nuclear science. There might be a course that just hasn't been taught in a MOOC environment, for example, and you have that opportunity to be the first person to put that course in a massive scale. Now that's unique. Memorable? is something that is probably the reason we ask our classmates, what's the best teacher to take this course from? Sometimes it's because somebody wants an ECA, but other times it's because one instructor is able to create more memorable experience. Let's face it, when we look back at our lives, we don't remember every day. There are, uh, there are many parts of our lives that will be a blur. And that is in part because there are no memorable moments in that part of your life. There can be good memorable moments and bad memorable moments. Of course, you emphasize the good ones, but there are many techniques to create this. Surprise is one of them. But at the same time, just theater techniques and other techniques that make people engage, not just how much they say, but how they say it. So looking at those elements and constructing a course that really truly creates experiences that students won't just forget about it tomorrow. We're trying to create strong neural pathways and really ingraining their brains some of the knowledge that they carry on and remember to the day they die. And we have to work in helping create those unique experiences. If we run a marathon, if we started sprinting, we probably won't get there. It's important to scaffold to help students get from point A to point B to point C and for students not to burn out in the first five minutes of the race. That's why it's important to know how to get students to a zenith or a high point in the course and then hold them there sometimes so they get used to that level and then you will bring them back up again. But having that repetition, consistency and just helping them get through the obstacles. It shouldn't be just an easy course but at the same time it shouldn't burn them out in the first five minutes. We're trying to help them learn and our goal is to get to the finish line and get as many people to the finish line as we can get people to the finish line. Meaningful it's a little bit different from unique and memorable because it's not just about remembering. Again, you could remember a bad moment. But meaningful is how this course applies to that person's career, life, 
what they want to be. Maybe they want to be a better builder. Maybe they want to be, maybe they want to be exactly what the course title was about. But how they want to apply that within their life can greatly vary. That's why it's important when we're creating assignments, not just creating them in what we think is best. I mean, that's part of it, part of the answer. But also providing some sort of interaction with the student, not just being teacher center, but student center. So the student can co construct what they think is most meaningful for them and really meets them at the goal that they're right now facing. The goal that you maybe think is the most important may eventually be important as well, but maybe at that point in time they have a different goal. How do we include for that in a course? It's important to consider and sometimes bring in their input when you're designing an assignment. And, you know, maybe giving the flexibility so that they can explore concepts that are more meaningful to them. How does the course, when it's applicable, applies to greater society in general? So a lot of the times when we do a course, what we do in the course stays in the course. And in a way, we're retarding or slowing down some students' contributions to society. To the level that we can, if we can link it to service so that students are not just contributing to an empty assignment that just goes in the little bin box that they have for completed assignments with a rubber stamp that they did okay, but that actually the assignment contributes to society, such as like, well, we're going to survey a community and see what their needs are, or we're going to actually build a house and learn how to build houses by building it, or we're going to interview people about racial problems or interview them about poverty and, and other aspects, or just we're going to engineer a bridge or we're going to work on an applied science project. There are many, many ways that we can create courses and assignments that contribute to society. But it takes time, it takes linking with organizations, it takes more effort. And we need to see how we can make that possible within our schedule. But if we do make it possible, it will greatly contribute to the experience of the student. And, most importantly, to society as well. We all come from different backgrounds. And no matter how hard we try, I can think that somebody can truly understand another person fully understand their life experience, be truly in their shoes. We can do the best that we can. We can try, to some extent, being less teacher-centered, but being a little more student-centered, trying to help them actually share their life experiences so that maybe, one, they understand themselves better, they understand the difference between them and other people, and how they can work with other people. So we need to create courses that are inclusive in that they're not only meaningful for their goals and, and help them, but at the same time, they, they take into account that we all come from different life experiences. We all have uh, something unique to share as well. So if we allow people to share and we create a course that allows people to get to know one another a little better, then we can truly create more, much more of that multicultural society that we want to aim towards, where we have a greater tolerance, and a greater understanding of people that are not like us. We all deserve the opportunity to develop our talents. Sadly, that's not the reality right now. There is exams to get past the door so that then you can access a course. And many people barely pass end up being the best or being as successful as anybody else. Um, so there are many others that don't get past the gates that would have been successful. That's a disservice to society and if technology can help reduce that disservice and allow people that may or may not finish also be part of the course because they don't disrupt the course and they will at least learn something. I mean, again, in a connectivist type of environment, we think of connectivism, not everybody ends up learning the same thing. In fact, that's part of that goal. We're all in different stages in life. When we create a course that's fully open, not everybody will finish. But hopefully everybody will take something out of that course. Hopefully everybody will be able to gain a new understanding of the world around them and of a particular subject. With this also in mind of creating a course open, it's not just having a link that anybody can access, but it's also taking into account that we have different ways that we connect to the global, increasingly interconnected global landscape. We have 6 billion mobile phone subscriptions but again, many of those are SMS technology or they don't really allow for 
students to you know that you can answer multiple choice questions you can answer polls through mobile devices you can text others but it's hard actually to deliver a course through a feature phone device but I mean increasingly people will have access to better technologies and we have to take into account well if we do want to have the most open course if we do want to reach the most people then we maybe have to take into account the concepts of universal design then we maybe should think of how our course will be accessed by those other people both you know from language barriers to just connectivity barriers and how do we reach as many people as we can uh, in the way we design learning doesn't have to be fun but fun experiences is, it can be more memorable it can be also the avoid burnout at times so if we can create learning experiences that bring out joy increase your dopamine levels just make you feel good then the more the better um, if we can include more gamification concepts so that learning is increasingly more fun and engaging then the better again this is not necessarily something that we have to include in the course but it's advisable to include it in a course if possible how do people have a good time taking a course and they go wow I'm so glad I took that course that was one of the best choices I made in my life I think we all want to feel that way and we all want to get those kind of reviews at the end of making a course and I think we have a way of influencing those type of results but I'm to make learning for them not for us to look good and, and, and look knowledgeable but for them to come out of the course knowing as much as they can know not everybody needs structure you know some people can learn in an unstructured way but a lot of people do benefit and I think in general most people benefit from knowing where the main assignments are what the deadlines are now some people benefit from a more intricate structure from a structure that is like a very detailed scaffolding for example um, if we can include this in a course great um, again the surprise element sometimes is nice too but including like well mod there are going to be modules and you'll have this different units and within the units you'll be expected probably to do this every week and I'll always have a, a report to you in a video and I'll uh, talk to you to try to decrease social distance or the, uh, increase my social presence um, that's all great you know you, if, if students know what to expect it's a good thing um, there can be positive surprises but let's try to decrease the negative surprises a clear module or a module that stands out on its own. What's important about it is that if we are having a MOOC, for example, and they are clear topics, then somebody may just be able to join the MOOC for a month and get what they want out of that MOOC. They won't follow along the whole way. Um, or, I mean, it's just why make modules? I mean, they can learn, they can pass on the knowledge and you can build upon it. But if you can create a separate learning unit so that people that need that learning unit can learn that topic, then better. I mean, why have to learn 200 pages when you're interested in 20? So it's something that I think that when we have a more flexible learning system for people with more MOOCs and more uh, information online and them developing their own personalized learning environments, that it would be more important to have modules that are more of an independent unit and stand out on their own. One of the best aspects about increasing connectivity is that now many voices that weren't previously being heard are being heard. This is a great thing. I mean, it's, it's amazing how connected we are now. And we should harvest that connectivity. We should try to make sure that more people are listening, of course, that it's not just the instructor talking to a, a talking head and everybody just listening, but that there's actually a, a back and forth. And that within that back and forth, that everybody has a voice. Um, that's one of the nice things about an asynchronous online environment. People that are usually too shy to talk in a face-to-face -face environment do share more of their own voice because they're less frightened by uh, the situation itself. Like, i got to raise my hand and then everybody's going to look at me. And all those concerns that of a social pressure are gone. So one of the parts of online learning that I always appreciated was the fact that it was more likely for people that were tended to be more introverted to share more of their voice and that's a good thing um, I think we can even go further than that I think but what in any way uh, we should take into account that there are more multiple voices 7 billion people um, it's over 6,000 languages there's a lot of voices out there 
and many of them have unique perspectives in life that we have a very difficult time putting ourselves in their shoes and that's very important how can we better understand the world well let's listen to more voices multimedia is also important because it comes to the fact that we are all different types of learners so some learners may think this video is too long that's why I'll probably share the slides on their own because it's important for students with different types of learnings to be able to benefit also from that learning experience and one way we can do this is you know adding a lesson and having this is a video that reinforces the concepts these are some images this is a text that reinforces the context this is the interaction environment um, activity that reinforces the content and together all of them help the student learn in a multimodal way so the students that have more kinetic learning the students that have different types of learning are able to, to benefit as well um, there are visual learners, it's just, you know, we, we, we need to consider that not we're all unique. And as a teacher, we have some preferences, but we can go out of our way to make a course more multimodal. Evaluation, it's one of the keys for improvement. Yes, 10,000 hours devoted in a subject may make you an expert. But without actually critical reviewing the whole process, being like, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? You actually probably won't maybe improve as much as you can. Uh, because one of the keys is you need to have critical feedback. Evaluation allows you to have the critical feedback. Not only you get students you know, to fill out an evaluation form sometimes, but you can even go further, interview a few students, ask them what you guys think of every assignment right after the assignment, maybe after the semester again. You know, do what you can. I mean, time is limited. But evaluation allows us to improve, and there is always room for improvement. Presence in an online course is very important because we can get lost in an online course. Uh, you are, you, you have to be captivated because otherwise you might not come back. And, and, and what attracts you to the course is that you paid a lot of money for it, but that's not ideal. We don't just want to keep people hooked because they paid a lot of money for it. Um, one way to increase people feeling comfortable with a course and sharing actually deeper details about themselves is that they feel that you are there and you're not a robot, you're a human being. Um, and you share about yourself, you tell them, well, I love reading your post and I like how you address that subject or the other subject and, oh, congratulations this week. Keeping a positive perspective, a lot of positive psychology applies to presence and, and helping the learner know that you, you are paying attention, you are following alone and send them comments once in a while. It doesn't have to be every time. It's just uh, seldomly, you know, s certain situations, they know there are a lot of students, but to address them at a personal level or, or for them to be able to see you as a person is very important. And with that, I want to say thanks. Um, really appreciate it sharing these points with you. Hope some of them were helpful. Again, this we're thinking about how education is probably going to be in the future and how we need to account for there's just being more MOOCs out there and uh, that we want to captivate students and provide them with a learning opportunity that they can always take something good out of our course even if they don't stay for the whole length of it and the course it's uh, a unique experience for all of them involved thanks